Welcome to Rack Rants. We got the legend himself, hottest producer, the one and only Scott Storch in the building. What's going on? Thanks for What's having me. What's good with you, huh? I'm chilling, chilling. What, what do you have new popping up right now? Everything. So what music are you working on currently? Oh, a lot of stuff. Um, currently, actually, I've been working with Dr. Dre oh. on a number of projects, like, you know, for his personal album. and Is his personal album ever going to come out? Oh, yeah. When is I'm it? I'm back in the fold. Of course it is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When is it supposed to come out? Um, there's no date, per se. Um, and there's another side of the um, music aspect we're working on. It's for his new television endeavors with Apple. So oh. there's a lot of stuff. He's got a, a, a little mini series coming out that's pretty pretty crazy. It's just it's a blessing to be back in Dre's crew after all the stuff that, you know, I went through personal life and this and that. And How did you and him reconnect because of the whole It wasn't thing? easy. It wasn't easy. I had to go through a lot. And enough people, I guess, had to tell him and convince him, like, yeah, he's actually really clean and sober and working again and back to what he was, you know, the, the machine, you know what I'm saying? I was, I'm a hit machine when I'm on. You, when no, I'm you, on, I'm on. Yeah, when well, you are, you are. So, I mean, you have flowing out. Yeah. The Chris Brown, I, sorry, Rick Ross. Yeah, I got a new record that just hit the charts um, with the game featuring Jeremiah. Oh, yeah, I All heard Lies. that. Yeah. Oh, you did that? I did that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I see you. Oh, speaking of Dre, I was just thinking about, the, so, you know, we broke a story, how he had a big incident, then they said that he pulled out a gun and all that type of stuff. Do you know anything about that at all? Dre was the victim in that one. That's crazy. A real racist. Beep beep. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was in Dr. Dre's driveway. Dre has, has you know, a high security team, this and that. He don't need to get his hands dirty. He don't carry guns and stuff like that, you know. When he pulled his, his phone out, the guy said, you know, another black guy with a gun. Sped off, 10 minutes later, Cops are at Dre's door. And the guy, what was he doing in Dre's driveway? What do you? What That's do you, a little too choreographed for me. Like that just seems like some some kind of setup or something. I don't know, man. All I can say is, it's not easy being a brother in the United States, even with a billion dollars. When you said that you had to do a lot of things to get back in good with him, what do you mean by that? Like, what are like? Is people had to holler at him? I was a real integral part in um, the birth of aftermath with Dre. And, you know, the Chronic 2000, with M, with this, with that, with 50, and all these projects we took on, Eve, Gwen Stefani. He had a lot of loyalty and a lot of respect and love for me. And when I was f***ing up and I was getting high and more concerned with, you know, chasing tail and doing drugs, and he still rode out with me, but so many times and so many times, it just, I kind of like, I tainted and tarnished the relationship to the point where he don't need to be around that. You know, he kind of washed his hands of me. Finally, a year ago, I, I, I got my stuff together, and I've been making leaps and bounds, and you know, you know, re, uh, remaking my empire, and it's, yeah. and it's working very quickly. Yeah, no, it is. You're back on, like you, you did. When that. I'm on, I'm on. But I did that, and I'm a little more powerful now because now I'm wifed up. Uh, my girl Florence has has been a rock for me and helped yeah. get me sober, and you know, when you, I know I love Florence. She she wanted to make sure. She's like, oh, honey, guess what, boo-boo? Um, yes, Coke is done because I am making sure it's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, I mean, that's cool, and she definitely inspired me to, to get clean, but every day I am the one that has to make the choice. I'm, I'm light years away from that. I'm not like, you know how they say people are drug addicts forever, and like, I, you could be around me, I'm, it's not gonna bother me. I serve my time with that and it turns me off just thinking about the smell of what that is. And, but you know what's so messed up is, I'm not, I'm not saying no names about anybody, but I see so much and so many real legendary people right now messing around with that stuff. And all I can tell them is it's just, it, there's no happy ending with it, mm -hmm. period. You could be on top of the world. You had superstar, whoever you are, and I'm directing this sword at somebody without saying names. Forget about that. It's getting uh -huh. you nowhere. It's going to take everything away. You had like about 70 million at one time. Yeah. And then you blew, you said, when you I made 70 million in my career. Yes. But I had some, a lot of millions and ran through a lot of millions and, uh, in a short amount of time. And sometimes, it, for me, it wasn't just the drugs. It was the combination of particular women and drugs. And, you know, having been locked up in a studio for 10 years before I even 
was socially like on the scene or anything like that or in the clubs, you know, I got into the limelight with certain people and got on cameras and got addicted to that life and the fast life and it was cool for the first six months but then it's just you're chasing the dragon you know and then now you see it you said that you don't even like the whole smell of it and that thing so you don't I'm done with it. i will smoke some weed all day long you don't think that that could be like a gateway though to relapse at all um no it's a completely different thing in my days of doing cocaine that was the last thing i was doing it was Jack Daniels and cocaine. Before that, it was just weed. And I'm back to that and it works for me. I can sit in the studio for hours and hours and, and I'm vibing, I'm you know, good spirits. I even eat edible marijuana, all that stuff. Is there anyone else who like helped motivate you to stay sober? Like my daughter, my three-year-old, my son, Steven, 24-year-old. Any other celebrities at all that reached out to you and just said like, I wanna help you out, Scott, you the man? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's been, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a few people that have always been um, ride or die for me. The Game is one of them. Um, Rick Ross is for sure one of them. Chris Brown. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that have amnesia when it comes to, like, what you've done for them in their careers and never really once asked me if I'm all right. Speaking of which, Chris Brown's been having a lot of different troubles and, of course, different situations. Have you been at all, like, try to reach out to him just to see if everything was like, okay, where, where, where you at with it, you know, and just different things? I love Chris, and he just needed to take his ass back in the studio and get back to work and just, and, you know, take it back to the, the Chris I know. A lot of really uh, people that I think that have forgotten who I am and what I, I've been through and, and actually just the magnitude of what I've done for this industry in the music world, redefining music, like they're they're gonna get a um, definitely a chance to remember. I've, I'm actually in the process right now of doing a Scott Storch movie, a life story movie, um, and Scott Bernstein, the guy that produced Straight Outta Compton, is producing it. Oh wow! Yeah, really? Ryan Phillippe is portraying me as my character for wow. a, a ten-part limited um, docu series. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So yeah. <laughs> and when when do you start that up? And, and before I say, I say that, um, I mean the script is already done; it's already in motion. So um, a lot of feelings are going to get hurt <laughs> from this thing because I'm not really holding anything back in the thing. It's it's a pretty accurate portrayal of everything. It was one of the craziest things I've ever had to do was sit in a room with a writer and a writing team um, and just go through everything as far back as I can remember in my life all the way up to now and every heart-wrenching story had me laughing crying everything it was crazy it evoked a lot of crazy stuff with your finances right so like right now every single hit do you do something special with your money something special like be like oh I want to say yeah, I'm just amount? coming back I'm, just, I don't, I'm not in philanthropist yet but I'm getting there I definitely um, I, I'm, I'm taking care of my family the right way right now that's the first step I got my family, I got my girl, I got a beautiful house, and I have a little percentage of this company um, that uh, my man has called a Purple Haze Vodka. Oh yeah, I heard of that. Yeah. I just want to do a little word game with you. Uh-oh. -uh. And it's just basically, we're gonna go over a certain couple people's names, and you tell me your feeling of them and how you feel about it. Christina Aguilera. Talented. Beyonce. Um, best voice in the world. Really? To me, she's got. She's the most talented person I ever worked with. Her range, stupid. Dang. Yeah, she's she's the illest to me. Wow. I worked with them all, every single one. I've been in the studio with Patti LaBelle. I've been seeing everybody sing. Everybody that uh, Mariah. Every, I'm just telling you right now. In my personal opinion, Beyonce is the end all be all of our generation. She's Aretha Franklin, time to time. Jay Z. Jay Z. He's, you know, he's the one. He's the, he's the best rapper of all time to me. Kanye West. Kanye West, he's a survivor and he's a fashion icon to me, and one of the best producers of all time. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is, he's, he's, he's dope. He's, he pushed the envelope um, and definitely, uh, he's the epitome of blue-eyed soul. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Um, He's a superstar. Any Scott reason? Disick. He's a wild dude. <laughs> He's a wild dude. 
so many things I could say about so many of the people you mentioned. But I, I know, but that's it. I know that's that you're cheap. just not. No, I know. I just know that you're just not being messy. Mm-hmm. But I know that for factual, that you know a lot of different things about each of these artists. That mm-hmm. is like inside is mind blowing to you. For sure. So that's why I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why, of course, some, some half. Half of those people are perfectly normal people, perfectly great people. And, the other and half people. of them are out there in my mind. Exactly. Yeah. Put it this way, some of those people make <laughs> me look like an angel. Yeah. They just kept working. Their management kept them working. And me, I stopped working. I was somewhere off in San Tropez popping a $30,000 bottle. Would you do it all again? Yeah, because that's what led me here, and I'm happy where I'm at right now. I mean, put it this way. Life, life is a lesson. You know what I mean. We all, you know, you have to take advantage of these lessons. Maybe it prevented me from doing something I would have done if that didn't happen. So now I live very cautiously. But there were some moments where I should not have lived. <laughs> I was going really hard. Well, thank you for tuning in to Rack Rants. I got the one and only, like I said in the building, Scott Storch. You guys come again. He's gonna have keep on having hella tracks. Just flooding the market this year. Hits singles are us. We'll call it. Singles are us. Poppin'. Poppin'.